Riparian Vegetation by Lucas Eward. Riparian vegetation is the naturally occurring vegetation that grows along the edge of rivers and streams. It is the transition between terrestrial and aquatic environments. It derives from the word ripa, which signifies stream bank, in Latin. The figure above illustrates the Ottawa River. Speckled elder, numerous fern species, as well as verbenum, can be found alongside this river. The area of a river where plants and aquatic ecosystems interconnect or live in symbiosis is known as the riparian zone. Many varieties of land-based and water-based insects require riparian zones to lay their eggs and provide shelter for their larvae. Insects that feed and reproduce in riparian areas include mayflies, damselflies, dragonflies, and caddisflies. Animals inhabiting the riparian zone include coyotes, turtles, deer, muskrat, frogs, and colonial birds, amongst many others. Riparian zones provide shade for fish and regulate the temperature of the water. Many species of animals depend on shoreline vegetation to hunt for insects or fish inhabiting the riparian zone. Insects, for example, that thrive and exist on plants, occasionally fall off from these plants into the water and serve as food for fish. The following slides provide illustrated examples of insect larvae that depend on riparian zones for their survival. The mayfly larvae, represented by figure 1. Figure 2 represents a damselfly larva. Figure 3 represents a dragonfly larvae. And figure 4 shows a caddisfly larvae, which is actually enrobed in its cocoon that is composed mainly of pebbles and sticks and other matter that might be found alongst the benthos. As mentioned before, Land-based and water-based insects require riparian zones to lay their eggs and provide shelter for their future larvae. Many insects lay their eggs under dead organic matter, or detritus, and rooted aquatic plants within the littoral zone, which allows the larvae to adapt to certain conditions and protects them from predators. Examples of riparian vegetation include shrubs, cattails, different grasses, cottonwood, alder, and etc. Here is an example of riparian shrubs. Uh, here is a photo of alder which is located by a stream or a river right alongside of it. Here's a photo of cottonwood. It has been clarified that well-established riparian zones promote the richness and abundance of certain terrestrial and aquatic plant and animal species. Nearly two-thirds of all of Canada's endangered species depend on riparian zones for at least a portion of their life. The riparian zone can be referred to as a vegetated buffer. In other words, it is a system that can absorb, filter, and reduce pollution or toxins that occur in the water as the water moves along the riverbank. Well established riparian buffers also act as a filter for sediment and reduce the velocity of runoff that regulates the natural flow of the watershed.
riparian vegetation or shoreline vegetation, such as trees, shrubs, and ferns, reduce atmospheric carbon dioxide, an abundantly found greenhouse gas, by converting it into oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. The photo below represents an example of this occurring. These vegetated buffers prevent shoreline erosion as long as the plants are well rooted. Deep roots hold the soil together and absorb the water that infiltrates the ground, which would otherwise be erosive to expose an unprotected soil. If too much erosion occurs, sediment accumulates at the bottom of the river, which can affect depth as well as flow, since flow and depth are interconnected, which would eventually cause the lake to dry out entirely. Well-established riparian zones are crucial for maintaining healthy aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. They supply nutrients and shelter for many different fish, insects, and animals by connecting aquatic environments with terrestrial environments. Riparian vegetation also acts as a buffer for pollution, toxins, and prevents floods as well as shoreline erosion. The riparian zone is an essential component of land and water-based ecosystems that are located within continental boundaries. Thank you for listening to my presentation. This is the end. And uh, here are my references.